Okay, doing a little follow-up video here on our Mystery 486 board. Um, had some beep codes trying to get this to boot, and the two codes I got were display card and memory seat. Um, the topmost SIM here was pretty loose, um, so I'm thinking just over the transit at the recycler. Uh, just got knocked out of position. I am going to reseat all of these just to be absolutely certain, but again, these are packed RAM bays. Um, I'm not sure, honestly, how much RAM this has got. I'm going to have to look up these SIMs just to see, but um, it's it's got to be pretty substantial for the era. Uh, now, the display card here is a Trident uh, VGA. Uh, it is an ISA IDE. At first I thought it was just like a long IDE, but um, it's just kind of amazing. Haven't seen one in a long time. Um, but we've got the uh, original price here of $95. Uh, now this is again made in the USA, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and I am not 100% sure how much uh, capability this has, but I want to say this is probably a, uh, a megabyte, I'm guessing, based on uh, the build, but I'm not 100% sure. We'll find out, hopefully, if we can get this to boot. Um, I do think the sound card's in working order, but um, I did blow off quite a bit of the dust. There's actually mouse poop in here, uh, and I noticed some small seeds, so at some point a mouse had probably lived in this, or at least eaten in it. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get this reseated to hopefully resolve our beep codes, and uh, I'd really like to see this thing boot. Okay, with all the RAM out, you can see we've got uh, two distinct types. We've got the silver-tipped and the gold-tipped here. And uh, again, I'm not sure what the capacity is on these, but we're going to look that information up. All right, so I looked up these SIMs, uh, and these particular chips are 131 kilobyte uh, SIMs. I'm assuming that these are similar, but we're going to look these ones up. Uh, interestingly enough, these are tipped with tin and lead. Uh, as their connectors, and of course we've got gold connectors over here, so I'm assuming one is probably faster than the other, um, but oddly enough, I'm wondering if that might be part of the memory issue here, just because uh, we've got some mismatch RAM, but not sure. Okay, so after a little more research, actually in both chips, uh, the individual chips on these boards are 131 kilobytes, so this, the full stick is a full megabyte give or take. Uh, and these, these are actually the same measure. Uh, they're megabyte, uh, sticks. So this is an eight megabyte Ram setup, which is pretty substantial for the era. Um, so I'm kind of excited to see this thing should relatively speaking work pretty well. Uh, assuming that once I reseat these, this will boot. Uh, again, that also still leaves us with the video card adapter, uh, which was presenting an issue as well. Uh, I notice this is pretty dirty. I don't see any like obvious corrosion necessarily. It just looks like there's some gunk on here. Uh, so I might try and clean that up, but uh, I'm just going to reseat everything first and just see if that helps because the card, the video card was fairly loose uh, and the RAM chips again were also uh, pretty loose. You can kind of see even this card's not 100% seated the way it should be. Uh, I did also pull out, this is a fax modem. Uh, once I got it out there, that became a little bit more obvious, but it is an AT&T uh, fax modem, which is kind of interesting um, because I don't believe they brand any uh, chipsets these days. Um, but again, original stickers on the back. I mean, a lot of this is in really good shape, all things considered. So, um, pretty interesting. Um, not sure uh, what this was used for, but, uh, be interesting to look this up and see what the, uh, baud rating is on this. Uh, I'm guessing of this area, it's not a 56 K, maybe a 14, four or maybe a 28, eight. I don't know. All right, so this Trident TGU-I9440 um, appears to be a megabyte uh, VGA card. Um, 
Now, again, this is a, a VPCI, so it's actually, I think I said ISA earlier, it's a VESA bus with a PCI uh, rear connector. Uh, it does look like these sockets are for uh, DRAM expanders. Um, so this looks like it could be an, a card that I could eventually upgrade if I wanted to. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it works, let alone if that would ever be advantageous, as this is probably a a DOS system. Um, maybe I could run Windows ninety five on this system. I don't. I don't know. It's uh, it's pretty pretty unlikely, but uh, we'll just see if we can even get it to boot. And I think we just kind of go from there. All right. So something of note here: this card is like tremendously difficult to get into place. Um, very difficult to get it to mount in the the front socket and then to coordinate it in the PCI slot in the back at the same time was a monster pain in the ass. So if if you want to talk about how far technology has come, graphics cards alone, just being PCI, PCI Express, AGP, you know, ISA, whatever, are leaps and bounds ahead of this setup with two separate sockets, not just two separate sockets, but two different pin configurations in said sockets. Um, really just annoying to get this in. So, And the other thing about this case is there's a lot of give on this board. Um, it feels like you're going to break the thing just putting it in. So got it in now. I'm going to screw it down so it's secure and tight. And then we're basically ready to go ahead and give this another uh, try here just to get this uh, get this booted. All right, so we've got the uh, monitor powered on. It's on auto detect. It's going into power save mode. Uh, we don't have turbo engaged on this, so I'm just going to let that ride for now, and let's just see what happens. We've got display signal. So far, no beep codes. The display signal is a little wonky, but we've got a cursor. No beeps, so aside from uh, the odd flashing bars on the screen, it sounds like everything has booted. Uh, now, again, there's a hard drive in here. However, I don't know that that's got anything installed on it operating system-wise. If the hard drive even works at this point, it's tough to say. Um, but this is farther than we got before, so um, we're going to go ahead and turn it off, hit that turbo switch, and see if that makes any difference. Okay, we've got turbo engaged. Seven beeps. Repeat it. So a new beep code this time around. We're going to go ahead and just hit the reset and just see if that holds. Alright, we got seven short beeps, so... I guess we got to troubleshoot that new beep code. All right, so seven short beep codes could indicate a problem with the processor, which would kind of be a heartbreaker because this is a 486 DA, uh, i486 DX2, uh, which I'm really kind of hoping works, but it's possible this just got jarred out of its seating. Um, and it could also be that there's supposed to be a second processor in here, and there is not. Um, so I do actually have other processors from the 486 era, but I think what we're going to try first is just to unseat and reseat this processor and then fire it back up and see if it'll work. All right, pulled the processor and reseated it here. So hopefully everything goes well. I was going to throw a second one in or at least have one to try in case it doesn't work, but you can see the pins on this need some TLC after the recycler. Uh, also, that one's at 33 megahertz, and this is a uh, much faster uh, processor, so hopefully I don't have to use that, but 
Uh, unfortunately, the other 486s I have won't fit this socket, so I'm gonna go ahead and give her a shot. No beep code yet. but also no display firing. Still nothing. Just power cycle the monitor here, but no beep code, so... So far, so good. Uh, except no display, so... I'm gonna go ahead and Hit our fancy dancy reset button. No change. Alright. Powering down. Give it a quick minute. And give it another shot. Got a hard drive sounding. No beat code. seems to be in order. But again, we've got no picture on the monitor. None at all this time. Okay, trying this again. Uh, I think what the issue was in the last boot attempt was the processor was not completely seated. So that uh, user error there hopefully has been corrected. And let's see if we get any post or any display. <laughs> uh, I just noticed, of course, in uh, all the changes I've been doing, got to plug the power in, of course. So that's uh, user error yet again. But uh, let's go ahead and flick around, see what we get. All right. There we go. Keyboard error. Because, of course, we uh, don't have a keyboard plugged in. But we have BIOS. Um, and that is, uh, that's really cool. That uh, is super rewarding. So we know the system works. We know it'll boot. Uh, now at this point, I just have to find a DIN connector keyboard and go from there. But uh, we've officially revived our mysterious 486 system. The next step is to get a keyboard and, of course, get uh, get this booted all the way so we can see if there's anything on these hard drives, if this has got a disk operating system of some kind, a command line interface or a GUI. Um, it's got a CD drive, so I, part of me thinks that this must have uh, at least Windows 3.1 on it, maybe Windows 95 if we're lucky, um, or maybe just an MS-DOS command line interface. But... Uh, I have a feeling we're going to be pleasantly surprised. Interestingly enough, I was digging through some of my um, rescues from the uh, card pile at the recycler, and I did find this old VESA LAN card, which will actually fit in the system. So there is a realistic chance, and I'm not going to get too terribly... Uh, too terribly crazy about it, but there is a realistic chance that if this has a Windows 95 system, which was internet capable, we might be able to take this little 486 for a spin on the internet. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, thank you for your attention in this video. I do appreciate it. If you've made it this far, hit that like button, that subscribe button for more content. We're definitely going to be playing with this 486 system more in the future, probably in the very near future once I get a keyboard. Uh, in the meantime, I've got some more Will It Boots coming up. And just as a uh, aside here, I am still doing my TRS-80 stuff, and I have a big box of fun that's going to be coming up soon, so stay tuned for that.